<laughs> all right 90 people in the waiting room not bad not nice bad all right let's hit it okay ready i'm ready so welcome to another event hosted by mental design academy as you're joining i invite you to open the chat and type in where you're connecting from what's your current role and your experience level with ai we'd love to hear if you're a creator aspiring or experienced designer and anything really in between or outside of those um, roles I'll be a host today. My name is Radu, and I've been a designer for nearly two decades, and I've worked with companies such as Adobe and Google. For the past few years, I've built uh, large design teams delivering products with seven figures impact, both in users and revenue, and I've mentored over 200 designers. And back in 2020, I co-founded Mental Design Academy to share all of that knowledge and experience I've gathered during my career. Over the years, we've been hosting these events to give back to the community by bringing industry leaders, like the one you see before, uh, before you, and thought leaders in front of you to share their learnings. And if you stick until the end of this webinar, we'll also throw in a few goodies worth over $1,000. Today, my guest is Ruben Hasid. Um, if you're not following him already on LinkedIn, Ruben has over 150,000 followers, that's a mouthful, and he's a passionate creator in the realm of AI. He's sharing a ton of knowledge on his profile, so I do encourage you to follow him. I'll post the links in, in the chat. Ruben, welcome, and thank you for so graciously offering some of your time to our community. Please tell us uh, more about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Radu. Thanks for the warm welcoming. I'm very pleased to meet all of the people, all of the people from Mento. Uh, just a little about us, we met in Paris, and this is how this whole episode came in and I was very glad to meet someone from LinkedIn because I don't meet that many people from the international audience. So I'm French, I'm from Paris. And as you know, French people love to talk French. So the thing is <laughs> I'm, I'm known on the international LinkedIn, but no one knows me in France and I don't know any French creator. So when you said, Hey, can I, drop off at your WeWork and can we have like a chit chat? I was so happy and impressed by this whole community that you that you gathered at Mento. I have to say kudos to you. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a content creator. I've been into digital marketing now for seven years. So not two decades, but I mean, long enough for me to be paid to do Facebook pages at that time. Um, uh, the only difference is that for seven years, I was doing it for other people. I was in the music industry and then in the fintech industry. I was creating it for labels. I was creating it for uh, startups, uh, one being Trade Republic. And I was then doing it for personal branding. That was like my first step into personal mm -hmm. branding. I was doing it for DJs. And I realized like, whoa, it's crazy how when you do it for DJs, it's much more rewarding than doing it for a label. <laughs> so I was 18 years old, 19 years old at that time. Oh, wow. And I already understood that I was like, hmm, interesting. What's what's happening with people buying from people? Awesome, Joe. I see some people working with DJs <laughs> as well. And um, and yeah, last year, exactly last year, in May 2022, I had um mental breakdown of for various reasons, you know, the quarter life crisis hit like super hard. And I just realized like, wow, I'm, I'm a so-called social media expert, and yet I don't share anything as myself, Ruben. Mm -hmm. So I just started to share some stuff that I was into. So copywriting, building a personal brand. And as soon as I stepped into AI, which I already had like a few experiences in the past, um, I had to share what I was learning. The thing is, I'm really good at like rabbit holes. So once I started digging, <laughs> I was digging like crazy. <laughs> I can be obsessed. I often refer to myself as an AI obsessed content creator. And uh, from, from that, I guess I grew like big following, worked with brands as well, uh, assembly, attention, notion, AI. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to be what I say, the bridge, the bridge between people and AI. Uh, and the bridge goes both ways. You have the people yeah. that are scared about AI and that they don't know about the potential, but you also have the sneaky product manager that do the product <laughs> and they have no idea how to tell the words, the other side of the bridge that, hey, I have a great product. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, yeah. Um, I do have some questions uh, prepared for Ruben. Um, so as you're joining, um, first off, just introduce yourself, let us know where you're connecting from, what's your current role and your um, experience level with AI. But also, if you have questions for us, type them in the chat. I'll we're going to keep track uh, of them. And then uh, second half of this um, webinar, we're going to answer them. And for people just joining at the end, we're going to offer some goodies. So stick until the end if you are interested in those. Um, all right. Um, when, this, when did you start with AI? Um, and what are you currently doing with it? So I think like my first automation, not AI, mm -hmm. not intelligence, but automation. My first automation was back um, when I was 19 years old. So at that time, I was trying to build Instagram pages and Facebook mm -hmm. pages. Yes, Facebook pages. I was paid for that in the music industry. And I realized like very active accounts could, um, could have a massive amount of traffic into their page. So there was this thing that was completely illegal. I was 19, okay? Again, guys, <laughs> I was 19. It was completely illegal. It was called Jarvi. And you could automate a human being but mm -hmm. on a level, you have no idea. Like you could have like sleeping time. You could scroll like a real human being, do a various different stuff. And I think that was my first like um, professional meeting with some sort of automation. Mm -hmm. and I've always been obsessed with something when I was either working or also when I was playing video games. It's something called theory crafting. So how to make the best out of, of out of a combination and usually you need some sort of automation or you know some sort of um testing and, and getting some data and then doing some excel file uh mm -hmm. i mean you are all ux ui designers are like most <laughs> of you so you know you know the data centric ways of doing things and um and yeah and then fast forwards to november november 2022 um i was living in berlin i was in a co-working space and uh, it was a funny co-working space because it was mostly people, uh, product people. And mm -hmm. I was a marketing guy. And when I mean product people, it's people uh, launching their first MVP, but it was like a, pro a physical product. So you had 3D printers, you had some, some companies in, in, in fashion and design. And there was a guy who was in cable management, you see, was building like the ne next NFC cable management company, mm -hmm. already worth like a lot of money. His name is Ali. Uh, I wish I could meet that guy again because with this guy, I discovered this silly chat of ChatGPT. Uh, the week it was out, uh, the week it was live, I remember um, both of us just sharing our knowledge on that weird thing that could write some poems. Hmm. So it really just started with me writing poems to my friend Ali. I was French, so the poems were mean <laughs> i was trying to make fun of his haircuts and then he was making fun of my uh, mustache and you know okay. we're just jamming around the fact Bashing that around we, okay exactly but the thing is i started making poems like in the style of shakespeare and then with alexandra and then in spanish and then like snoop dogg and then like eminem and then it, it just kept being deeper and deeper and then well as i said rabbit hole Kind of guy so mm -hmm. started just reading twitter reading blogs reading everything the whole documentation on that thing and um i needed to brainstorm a lot of ideas for my clients i was a ghostwriter so i was brainstorming like hundreds of ideas it was insane and um and he for who's for who's not familiar with that term what does a ghostwriter do and yeah. oh a ghostwriter is someone who writes content for someone else okay um you have public speaking ghostwriter, for example. Yeah. So politics, they don't write their own public speaking uh, text because that would be a mess. Uh, <laughs> they have someone else doing it. And same goes to social media. So I was handling the social media of uh, CEOs in Berlin and one financial analyst in Paris. Mm -hmm. That was my job. And I was this guy who was doing marketing in the very product co-working space. That was fun. That was really fun. And, um, and so this guy, Ali, needed to do a thesis and I needed to brainstorm ideas. 
And by just checking our stuff, like writing emails, writing, he wrote his old thesis in like a week. It was insane. Oh, wow. Um, like the whole thing, uh, table of contents, references, everything. Um, and I was just deep diving into the possibilities. Um, I didn't start talking about it until January because I felt like no one knew about it. And in January, I kind of hit another low. I was bored with my own content and I really wanted to share my passion with this rabbit hole mm -hmm. I was digging. And G January this year or last year? Yeah, this year, this year, January wow. this year, 2023. And this is how I, I started just sharing my discoveries and people just loved it. And this is how I grew from 10K to 150K from January to That's insane. Uh, today. That is, that is what, like, I mean... 30,000 followers a month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying not to focus too much on that. To be, to be really honest, the problem with if you focus too much on how much followers you have, or mm, that's true. it's just, it's not the end goal. I don't, I don't even check them that much. I really, uh, I really want to upgrade my skills. So for now, my biggest expertise is uh, chat GPT, GPT-4, and mid journey for the design. Mm -hmm. I try to be the really best at those two. And trust me, I, I keep learning new stuff all the time. It's crazy. I guess this is why you have something like mental. Yeah. Because you have new stuff all the time on a certain topic and on a certain set Absolutely. of skills. And you have to renew it all the time. And um, having this kind of community truly like helps you. And I guess I really try to be at my best on those two skills. I'm handling conferences on the topic as well. Mm -hmm. um, just sharing, as I said, being the bridge between people and AI so that they can safely go through the bridge and then discover what's at the end of the bridge, which is new, yeah. new potential. Absolutely. And we have a question geared exactly towards that. But yeah. um, I let, let's kind of address the elephant in the room. And I think this yeah. is part of all the conversations today yeah. about AI. Is AI going to steal our job and specifically our, our design jobs? It, I love that question. <laughs> if you're a designer in 1990 and you're not into the internet, mm -hmm. is internet going to steal your job? Or did it give more jobs to designers? Because then all of a sudden being a designer was easier or the cost of career was just easier. Absolutely. I guess that's the right way to say it. Now, I do want to say something. The speed transformation that AI is doing compared to, let's say, the internet, it's nowhere close. It's mm -hmm. much faster. So if I was a designer, I would make sure to be always, always top of mind of what's going on inside my industry. I'll give an example of a very viral post that was made, um, I think it was last week. Um, it's a cute one. It's about an, an architect that says, I spent five years learning 10 programs to be a good architect. And I feel like the, the analogy is good between UX UI designers and architects yeah. is that you have to learn like a lot of programs. There is a lot of design into it. And a lot of focus on, on I love that because I actually, I, I'm an architecture dropout, but uh, I went to architecture because I felt like it was the closest to UX design because at the center of everything that you do, you have the human and you need to study them and you need to understand how they go about their lives and how they interact with various things. And then you need to design things that make sense for them and help them yeah. in their day-to-day -day life. So I think actually your analogy is, is perfect. Architecture is very, very so similar to architecture. UX design. And that girl was, uh, so the video is really quick. It's kind of like a TikTok. And um, and she just shows that she learned ten programs to do, to know you know if there is enough heat or not inside the room. You know you have some calculation to do and to do some mockups. I won't go into too heavy into the details, but then she just show like three different tools that do all of that. Now uh, are those tools already able to replace someone? Probably not. Where, 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 where do I think we are right now? If we take back the analogy of being a designer in the 1990s, mm -hmm. I think we're like at the launch of, the, of just the internet. 
Okay. Which at that time, internet wasn't so sexy. <laughs> internet was like... It wasn't. It was like, I can send an, a, a message to a guy in Brazil and Romania without a fax. I don't yeah. have to call him. And that was like, wow, crazy. Um, did we knew that after that you had Figma and Webflow and you could do some A-B testing on Google? Hmm. No, no one knew about all of that. And yet today, when you're a designer, Figma, Webflow, mm -hmm. A-B testing and Google, it's like, yeah, man, it's, it's like, it's yeah. classic, yeah. So right now I feel like we're like at the beginning of the first wave. Now I do think that the analogy stops in terms of the timing. Mm -hmm. It's much faster. Oh yeah. I'm going to give an example for you. Um, there is like my favorite image generative AI tool is called Midjourney. Mm -hmm. Midjourney was released in March, 2021. If I'm not mistaken, I very, no, 2022. So mm -hmm. one year and a half. And that was version one. Version one was creepy as fuck. It was, <laughs> was weird. And I can, I can show you an example real quick. That's V1. Okay, oh. that's V1 of Yoda taking a selfie. Oh, dear Lord. You know Yoda from Star Wars. Yeah. May the force be with you. So that's V1, March 2022. That's horrible. Oh, yeah. That's today. Oh, wow. Of Yoda taking a selfie. You even have the light inside its ears because the sun comes from the back. Yeah. That's insane. That's it just is. a year from now. <laughs> and... And yet again, um, the, the, the CEO of Midjourney said he's going to release a new version every few weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's 5.1. That's a version 5.1. And he wants to release new version every few weeks. So the speed of the technology is just crazy. So if I was someone in such a um, technical mm -hmm. kind of um, job, like UX UI design, like architecture, it would be stupid to, to do that. Just yeah. like travel agents kind of be, uh, they went like internet. I don't mm -hmm. care. I have my clients. People come to me and just knock at my door. So, so yeah. And then I, I can see a question, which is the traditional one. How do I keep up with this? And, and people are always <laughs> sending me messages. I am scared. I don't know how to keep up with this. Um, just like waves. For now, you have people like me, content creator, that try to hit every spot. And trust me, I have some people who say, what should I do on video editing? What should I do on marketing? What should I do for finance? What should I do for UX UI design? What should I do for architecture? So I'm trying mm -hmm. to give my best and to deliver mm -hmm. enough content. But I think the second wave of content creator, just like me, is going to be like hyper-focused. Like I'm, an, I'm a UX UI designer with a focus on AI so that I can mm -hmm. find and fetch the best information on that topic. Um, I'm sure I'm so not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish I was that guy, but I'm not into, um, I'm not that much into UX UI design. I do like design with my journey. I do like to understand. I, I love the, the, the whole. It's uh, good that at least one of us is like really into UX design. Wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's why. No, but that, that's a genuine question. Then how do you keep up? I guess being in Mento, if if one of the guys from Mento get to know a crazy tool, get mm -hmm. to know, and we'll, we'll talk about Galileo, for example, afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's it's you try to have a network of people because that's the yeah. network of people that will you know bring you that that information. And I, I think maybe another thing is like trying to keep up almost seems like this is secondary to what you do and it maybe should be primary of what you do. Because if it's like your day-to-day -day thing to work with AI and use it as a tool, like you'd almost ask like, how do I keep up with Figma? Well, because you use it every day, you're, you're there, you, you know, you use it every day. So you don't actively need yeah. to do anything like if you would be using Figma and you ask me like, how do I keep up with, you know, the latest camera? Like, of course, that's another effort that you need to do. And I think you brought up a good point, which is um, AI is sort of like the internet much, much, much faster, but like the internet, it's a tool. So then 
as people, we're going to be able to do more with it. And of course, our jobs will transform. They're going to be different and we're going to have to adapt much like, you know, painters will like pissed at photographers because, you know, yes. it was much easier now, you know, like previously exactly. it took like uh, two weeks. But it's cheating. Photography yes, is course. cheating. It is. Making you know? clothes with electricity. It's cheating. Making yeah, agriculture exactly. with tractors. <laughs> That's cheating. You the horses and the and the cows. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. But... I I think another thing is like what I usually tell people, at least for now, like right now. I think there's like two two things, um, and the way I see an answer to to this. So I I see a few levels. So if you're concerned that you know AI will will um, kind of steal your job, um, what like. Is AI doing design by itself? No, somebody needs to prompt it, right? So, oh, we need someone. So then we get to like, oh, is someone using AI with no experience gonna steal my job? Well, you know, go ahead and code an entire iOS app no. and publish it on the app. Yeah, you have some knowledge as well. If I had to make like a, like, let's, let, that's a terrific example, right? Because you really pin down exactly the question of, is it replacing me or not? Imagine we have both access, you and I, Radu and I, to this crazy AI that makes great, great design website, okay? Mm -hmm. So the website is already better than 80% of the UX UI designers, okay? Yeah. And we both put the same prompt because I found a good one and you found a good one. So we have the exact same design layout, okay? But as always with AI, um, you have some variation, you know, some possibilities. And let's say I have 10 in front of me and you have 10 in front of you and it's the same website, okay? Will I be the best one to select the best performing websites? Yeah. Or would you be the best one? Yeah, because you, you need to know like what, what good looks yeah. like, right? You need to know that. Yes. AI and, doesn't and know yet. Exactly. Yes. And same goes with like, let's say content creation. Um, if I give you 10 pieces of text and I'm given the same 10 pieces of text, I'll probably do a better job Absolutely. at, at picking <laughs> the, the right text. And then some people might say, yes, but Ruben, at some point, the AI will learn how to pick that right content. Yes, that's why you should always be on top. Um, if your knowledge of UX UI design stops at just having like one template that you can nail, and you mm -hmm. can sell to people, you're probably yeah. not the best type of UX UI designer. And you're probably like the easiest to replace. Yeah. Because yeah, if anyone copies, just like content, by the way, if mm -hmm. I just have one type of content, one type of text that I know perform, well, anyone can copy it and just put it into an AI and says, okay, now can you write like Ruben? Yeah. If my copywriting skills, storytelling skills, formatting skills, networking skills. Mm -hmm. I have hundreds of other skills for uh, creating content yeah. uh, stops there. Then yes, I'm going to be replaced. So it's just a matter of being on top of it is having more experience, as you said, trying it, using it, mm -hmm. and understanding that the people that will be on top will be the one that have access to the best tools and have the best strategic thinking to do the decision. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the other, you know, kind of like extreme example as, you know, AI sentient and is doing whatever, or like, it's so easy to use AI and so easy to replace us that, you know, it, it's that easy. And then I'm like, I can't wait to relax on a beach and have robots <laughs> do my do my work. It's because... never gonna happen. I mean, that, yeah. that's my hot take, but it's never gonna happen. And I, I think, the other reason for why it might not happen, right? Like if, even if it happens, it's going to be, you know, I, I would assume well for everyone is like, if there's someone else working and stealing everybody's jobs, who's got money to pay for whatever AI is creating, right? Cause right now we, you know, you kind of have like people paying for what AI is creating. You kind of have like the subscription to chat GPT yep. and all of that. But if it steals your job, so you don't have like a revenue and income. Who's gonna pay for anything that AI is doing? Like you're not gonna have any, you know, money in the yeah. I have a very good analogy for that one. 
um, if we got back on time, and I'm sorry to be not so precise, but I think it was like roughly 100, 150 years from now, 70% of the population was making food again. Mm -hmm. 70%. Seven people out of 10 oh, wow. was making food. Because that took like a lot of handwork. I'm talking about like before electricity and all. You had the horses, you had the cows that would do the heavy lifting. But guess what? You had to take care of them. And then you had like the farms were like this with like a lot of people handling the farms and then the people handling the horses. And then, you know, it's a whole, it was a whole different society. Um, and I'm pretty sure people from that time, when they've seen some electricity coming on, some people might have been like, man, imagine if not seven people out of 10 were doing the food, but only one. We're going to be at the beach. At this time, I think the beach was not the ideal, but I don't know what was their ideal, but they mm -hmm. were just, we're going to be just chilling. We're going to have the food anyway. So mm -hmm. why would they, would we be working? It didn't happen. Uh, yeah. Not at all. Actually, the opposite happened is that the people left the farms. The people left the, the countryside. They came to the cities and they start being copywriter and UX UI designers, <laughs> you know, like, did you think that the people from the farms would be like, yeah, well, I'm going to be a UX UI designer. Like, no, <laughs> it just didn't happen. So for now, actually, even when you see Goldman Sachs and a lot of reports, they say that you're going to have some heavy disruption for sure. Of course. Now, I'm not going to say we're not going to lose job because it already happens right now uh, in some companies in the US. Some CEOs said, yeah, we're, uh, we're doing some layoffs uh, because mm -hmm. we're just going to replace it with ChatGPT. So yes, it happens. But after the disruption, you have adaptation and some new jobs will open up. And in the reports, they say that AI will actually create more jobs. Will it be more focused on social skills or, as I said, like being an expert into optimizing the output, qualifying the output, as I often mm -hmm. say. For example, on Twitter, the very best mid-journey creators. So mid-journey mm -hmm. again, image, image generation. Mm -hmm. When you create on mid-journey, you put a prompt, put a line of text, and you have four images. And then you can iterate on the four of them or one of them, Mm -hmm. or none of them and you start to and you ask the ai to start generating four new ones you 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 get the point right yeah, yeah well the very best creators the very best artists are art director yeah of course cuz they know of like course. how good output looks like yes because that's their job their job is like they see something they're like no that's trash and they mm -hmm. refresh maybe 10 times Maybe one of them, I would have been like, it's cool. I kind of like the Yoda here. So maybe <laughs> we should pick it. Well, that's where the difference comes in. This guy would tell you like, oh no, you know, the sun is actually hitting into that line and you have some lines there and it shouldn't <laughs> come that way. And this one doesn't feel natural. And the fact that Yoda is this close, it doesn't bring like the product really good. So all of that, yes, it's going to be factored in at some point into AI but you always have someone on top. I don't, I don't believe this fantasy of the beach and we're <laughs> just gonna play with our thumbs. First, because human beings hate that. We want to create problems in our lives uh, because we're problem solvers. Um, uh, the richer you are, the more desperate and, 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 um, and depressed you are at some point, yeah. at some level. Because you don't have any problems and that's a problem. So you, you start yeah. creating problems. And actually, I know like a lot of people who, you know, by, by many standards, they struggled and they could have retired for like um, the rest of their life. And then three months in or like six months in, they were like, I need to do something because like yeah. this is not working. That's just, so, that, that's it, something from my past boss that I was writing posts for uh, as a ghostwriter. He was mm -hmm. a fintech leader, a fintech leader. Um, what's funny is that when he was 20, 21, he built this company 
around brand supplements at the very early stage of the internet. And he had access on a very early domain, which was newtropic.com, something like mm-hmm. this. And the domain name was just like perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. He bought it for almost free and he never paid for content, never paid for marketing. And he made like hundreds of thousands of dollars and he was 21. He did oh, wow. it for like years. And then he sold the company and he made millions. And he was like 25, 26, and he had millions of dollars. And I remember he told me like, Ruben, you know, as soon as I had those millions of dollars, I spent six months in Cambodia mm-hmm. at the beach, just hitting on girls, doing drugs and enjoying myself. Okay. And he wanted to do that for six months. He said, I did it for a month. And then I knew it couldn't continue. I needed to do something else. And then he went back to, uh, um, to Berlin and he started uh, the company that I was into, mm-hmm. the fintech one. Because he figured like, yeah, what's the point? All right. So I'm just conscious of time because I, yes, I think yes, we yes, could please, be here uh, like yeah. all day talking and we have a few more questions. Yeah, and that's then true. We have a lot of questions in the audience as well. So, okay. AI for the moment is a tool, you know, it's like, it's not sentient, it's not doing anything by itself. You know, it's not deciding to build a website or a company by itself. It needs someone to prompt it. It needs someone to um, prompt it. It needs someone to tell it whether the output is good or not. How can someone learn to use AI? Like, where do you start? Um, Obviously there's, because it's so new, there isn't a lot of like, I mean, there's like people starting to build some content on it, but it's, you know, like you don't have the school for AI, yeah, it's how to use AI. So like, how, how do, how does anyone start incorporating and learning how to use AI and incorporate it in their work? So I have to start first with the fact that I have two courses of course. on GPT-4 and Midjourney. Now that it That's is That's why course, we're here. <laughs> I mean, I have two courses on GPT-4 and content creation. You have the basics of prompting as well, basic of NLP, natural language processing how to talk to the machine and one on mid journey for the design. Mm-hmm. Um, how did I get all of that content? How did it got into my mind? Um, first I read the documentation. Official documentation is always good. The only problem is like, it's boring as hell. It's horrible <laughs> to go through, but if you do, well, it's kind of like doing all of the classes from Figma. They probably have, 20 classes ish. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure if I go on Figma's website or Webflow, I know mm-hmm. Webflow has this. Well, if you do those classes, it's a good starting point. It's a good starting point to get your tiptoe into it. And as you said, and that's the most important part, so that you can start trying. Guys, you won't master anything if you don't try. Absolutely. You don't get bulky at the gym if you never step in in the first place. And if you don't do- Or just reading by uh, reading about it. Yes, you won't get bulky by reading about the best gym exercise. Now you need to do the exercise and figure out, okay, I'm terrible at this. Maybe I should check someone doing the exercise. And then you're like, oh, that one was interesting. I'm, I'm going to try it myself. So this is how I did it. So how did I find like the inspiration? Uh, multiple things. You have YouTube. Mm-hmm. The best one is Twitter, but it's also the wildest but it's the most up-to-date. Okay. You have Twitter, you have some newsletter. Uh, I also have one. You have the rundown, which is just like AI news. You have a bunch of uh, a website as well for tools. I'll be sharing with, with you so you can share with your um, community mm-hmm. uh, to stay up-to-date with tools. Um, and then apart from the Twitter, YouTube newsletter, LinkedIn as well is one try to have a few voices. This is how I do it. I have a few voices on some topic and I read all of their content because in the end, what am I? I'm a creator as a content creator. Yeah. I'm a creator because people think it's too hard to learn everything. Well, I'll be the creator for my community. I try to create the content so that they know the best tools, so that they know the best ways of using it, because I try to use it as well. Now, if I was a UX UI designer, because I feel like a lot of them are, 
there is this crazy tool that I keep seeing on Instagram. Which one? Even Galileo. Okay. Galileo. I think you shared AI. that with me before the. Yeah. It's this one. So this one, I wish I had access so that I could teach you how to use it. But you can see it here. They put like a, a text here. Mm -hmm. And it's generating the, and now everyone's going to be so scared. Like, no, it's my <laughs> job. <laughs> um, I also run a, a design studio where like 15 designers now, and we used Me Journey um, yeah. to help us. But I think the the big thing still here is you still need to know what to ask of it. So oh, yeah. like, sure, if you show me like generate a page where like people can do this, this and that, that seems so easy, but you need to know how to ask that. Like it's not yeah. obvious. And then sometimes that's going to generate a good result and sometimes it's going to generate like something weird and you need to tell it, oh no, not like that's that. The thing. I need it to change. I need for you to change it in this way. And I think still yeah. a lot of like our practices as UX designers, such as like research yeah. and testing, because like the AI is not going to go and take what is generated and run it by people and see how it works, right? Is um... There is something very bad that, that the AI is not really <laughs> able to do for now. And I don't see it doing it better than us. I have a hard time thinking it could do better than us. It's qualifying the outputs, as I keep saying. Yeah, because for now, it's not sentient, as you said. So it cannot say like this is great and this is not. Um, mm -hmm. You could do some A/B testing. Okay, maybe you could do two stuff and then having some data, and then yep. keep keep taking like the best one. Um, but I feel like if I'm someone who can qualify the output, mm -hmm. and I'm doing the A/B testing, I'll be faster and more effective. Um, mm -hmm. So for now, it cannot tell you like this one was great, this one was not. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. I was thinking about AI is trained on everything that humans did before, right? So this yep. is the kind of the what powers it. So yeah, it didn't came up with like it can remix and rematch things, right? That we created, but generally humans are going to be the ones who go like. You know the the connections happen and they just like generate some things out out of thin air yeah. i think that's like maybe very interesting that's why it's a tool that's why it's like electricity to me um, <laughs> the electricity was not like i'm gonna make internet and computers and then figma no it's the, it's the people that end up using electricity in various different stuff they're in different styles and creative and even in the way i use it mostly ChatGPT is for brainstorming. Yeah. You get into ideas. Even when you're doing mid-journey with your team, I'm pretty sure you, you're like, okay, this guy's into fitness and I have to do some fitness stuff. So you start generating like a lot of variation of images. And what's crazy is that you can do like 40, you can do a hundred images mm -hmm. just like this. And out of the hundreds, you're like, hmm, interesting. Okay. I never thought about this. Now I'm going to, try it that's how i have my headline that i know a lot of people like mm -hmm. my headline on linkedin master mm -hmm. ai before it masters you a part of it was made by gpt mm -hmm. um, i would I, have been surprised if it wasn't to be honest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's because i was brainstorming some headline i i gave him the context so this is where my prompt engineering came in to help yeah i gave him a lot of context this is the emotion i want to convey this is a headline. I want this much characters and, and, and I want to hook people. I want to sound like the expert, but at the same time, I want people to feel like there is a FOMO. And yeah. at some point it said something along the line of master AI before it gets you or before like the ending was not good. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I was like, oh, master AI before it's you. Mm -hmm. master AI before it masters you. I like the, the, the tone. I like the, how snappy it was and how mm -hmm. like it hooked me. Yeah. But I made that out of like hundreds of titles, hundreds of headlines. And after spending tens of thousands of hours on LinkedIn. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I want to use that small pause to just let everyone know we're reading their questions and we're going to get to them in uh, a minute or two. I had so many questions lined up for Ruben, but, and I thought <laughs> they were not enough, but I think, you know, we, we could spend a lot of time yeah, should, should. Uh, here. Okay. So we cover like, okay, how can you start, you know, like you can definitely follow Ruben. He has some like good content on that and then by using it and by. Yeah. And finding some other voices as well. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. And, and we also, like I had the question here, are there any specific AI, AI, AI powered design tools out there that our audience might start using tomorrow? I think you mentioned Galileo. Then there was Galileo. another tool um, you showed me. Oh yeah. I sent you one. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know them by heart think, because. Yeah, no worries. Um, I think I have it here. It's on Cody.com. And this one was yeah. about. Um, so this about, one, I know, I know what it does. Um, you can go on the websites and you can screenshot something and then you can have something to edit it inside Uncody. It's kind of like they did their own Figma. Mm -hmm. um, so their point is like, I, I, if I remember the video correctly, you screenshot a, a, a website, you literally mm -hmm. steal mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole thing. Let's be honest. I mean, you steal the whole thing and, and then you have shady, yeah. uh Morals shady there. tool, but I mean, look again, shady tool, but it's happening. It is true. It's happening. Uh, uh, for now, what, what, what was hard for copying a website? Because there was some code. That was the hard part, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why can I not just copy someone, someone like just like this? There was some code, but for now, I think it's going to screenshot something. You have the um, something that you can edit, and then you can publish the websites. Um, so just bear in mind, some people might be able to do that. You create a website and they're going to be able to copy yours and then just edit a few stuff and launch it. What does that mean for you? You <laughs> need to find better ways to make better websites for better reasons. That's Not just true. because I'm able to do it, but because I know, because I'm the expert and I need the research. For example, for my button on my website, you told me, oh, you should use saturated colors. People like to click on saturated colors. Yeah. I would have never known. And if I'd copied something from another website, I would have never known. And if that guy didn't use the saturated uh, colors, you know, mm -hmm. I would have not known. So it really is about knowing your subjects. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure at some point, you know, at the rate of um, the, the advancements of AI, they will be able to tell you that um, as well. I think there's going to be a tipping point at which, you know, if the AI can do everything and, you know, as UX designers, as content creators, we spend years crafting our, our skills. So if AI can, you know, easily steal our jobs when it's so qualified, then I imagine they stole, stole all, all jobs before that. And then, you know, we're, okay. we can let's always- Let's take that example. That's a great example. So let's see far in the future. And here, I think it's more like 50 years, but I mean, I don't know, it's going really fast. Uh, 50 years, a hundred years, I need a website and there is this AI that makes perfect websites. Yeah, but you know how clients are. <laughs> One, they have no idea oh what they want. Oh dear lord. Two, yeah. They're like kind of babies. They have some needs and they need emotional support. They need to send you a message being like, Hadu, I don't know about this. And you know, I've been I've been I've been into that uh project for so many uh so much time. I really need you to do a great job about this one. You still need like human beings, and I'm gonna give you why an example of why. Uh chess master thought that from the moment machines will be better. At than human at doing chess, mm -hmm. people won't care anymore about chess. Hmm. Chess has never been this powerful, this much used, this much played in human history. It's like insane, the, the, the appeal and hype around chess. Even though machines better at chess than any human are available to the public. Mm -hmm. And yet... I'm going to watch two men trying their hardest to beat the other one 
in this like emotional struggle of chess, you know? Yeah, that's true. So you'll still need some social. You'll still need some people being like, don't worry, I got you back. I'm going to make the best design for you, the best website. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to be more social than, so that's going to be the one guy making a job of a hundred UX designers because with just a few prompts and all that, he's going to be able to do it, but not one AI rolls them all, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're almost to, uh, to the hour. So I'd like to start taking some questions from the audience because yeah, yeah. we're short on let's time. Do it, let's, do it. let's, uh, let's see, you can take a look as well. I'll yeah, see yeah, if I can examples. pick one. Um, all right. So one was how to get specialized in prompt. I think we already kind of covered that, you know, there's, yeah, like it's NLP, uh, natural language processing. Um, I did a course on that. You can, you can read all the documentation. The only problem is that you either have something that is very scientific mm -hmm. or you have something very easy. But if you want to have a few of the basics, usually an AI has a database. So you really need to use the correct words to activate that database. For example, ChatGPT has a lot of knowledge, general knowledge, maybe mm -hmm. too much. So it helps. It's not always the case, but um, most of the times it helps giving them a role, act like a designer. And now I want to ask you questions. Mid journey doesn't work that like that at all <laughs> because mid journey is more like it's words. You have strong words. For example, is it taken by your Kodak or is it a Nikon or is it a Leica that took the shot? What's the focal? What's the millimeters? Is it an American shot? Is it like a portrait? Is it a selfie? That's the kind of words that activates mid-journey. And mm -hmm. I have no idea what activates the future UX UI uh, tool, but it literally is about learning the language of the design stuff, just like you learn Figma mm -hmm. and you know what some words like left aligned yeah. or yeah. you have some crazier words means, you know? And I think I wanted to answer a question. I mean, I, I saw it, I saw the score of the question in a few questions um, here on like, you know, um, what's left, like obviously part of our job is gonna be um, AI, right? As UX designer. So we're gonna generate um, yeah. wireframes quicker because we already have a database of what works, which, if you think about it, people were doing it already. Like if you're super smart about it, you have like a, a library. And yeah. even before, um, you know, AI, we had all of these libraries with like pre-made screens, right? You didn't even need to prompt an AI. You already had them designed you have and them tested. Because you have the documentation. And, and, and you have them and uh, like the um, human um, interface guidelines by Apple and uh, Android also do that. Like they, they solve a lot of like figuring out what needs to be done. Right. But I think, you know, once we get faster with that, and I, I don't think to be honest, like AI has changed anything here because you, you could compare it with like all of the libraries and uh, tools that you can just buy right out of the internet. Like it's mm -hmm. $20 to get it, have wireframes for like 200 use cases. Yeah. Right. The AI is not going to be in the conversations on whether the company wants to build that or not, right? So all of the conversations, all of the calibration, all of the work with product managers, with engineers, AI is not going to be there because you can't have those conversations right now. You need to be there and say, hey, you know, like we envisioned this, but like, here's like um, what we need to do or like, let's discuss. Yeah, you debate. still need a guy to embody the whole, <laughs> the whole thing and uh, yeah. to convince people to sign contracts to shake some hands. Yeah, exactly. That's probably just going to be much more needed. Um, and I often say it with content creators. They ask me all the time, okay, but do you use ChatGPT to create your own content? And that's a good answer. Of course right? not. I use no? it for brainstorming, but I don't oh, okay, use it okay. for copy pasting. You know, I don't oh, go like, course, yeah. that's the perfect prompt. I have my post and I just share it, mm -hmm. uh, which says a lot. <laughs> yes, maybe with the right prompt, you could write better content than 50, 70, 80% of the population. If you want to be the top 1%, it's nowhere close. 
uh, you show it to the one percent top of LinkedIn, and they tell me, "Oh, but Ruben, um, I tried it, and the hook is not good. Storytelling is not good. The formatting is not good. They use too much emojis. They didn't mm -hmm. make that much uh, of networking and all that." So, mm -hmm. yeah, be that one percent. <laughs> like, push your own skills. We had another question in here. Is it still a good time to become a UX designer? And I think the answer to that is, you know, if you're getting into this type of work and career because you're passionate about it, because you want to help people, because you want to build things, you're a builder, right? Is it like yeah. asking, you know, is it a good time to still do things out of wood? I mean, you know, yes. if, if that's your great passion. have answer for that one. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's Alex Friedman, one of the best podcaster. Mm -hmm. He's an AI researcher at MIT, and he invited Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. Mm -hmm. Both of them are heavy programmers. Okay. Like they code all the time. And they have like they're jamming. The whole podcast is awesome. You should really check it out. Um, and Lex is like scared. He says, um, for now, I'm using GPT to have to code a little, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's doing like a pretty good job. But I already see like the problems, but like in a few months, maybe like one year, um, it's going to probably do like a better job at me than coding. So we might not need any more code anymore, uh, any more people programming the codes mm -hmm. and, and doing it. And Salm has this answer and he says, do you think there is enough code in the world? <laughs> and Lex is like, oh no, not at all. I can see like, so many uh, uh, mo uh, location, places, industries, niches, or it, it lacks heavily of codes. Like for example, uh, the government or uh, mm -hmm. have you ever tried to get an appointment for your passport for your, uh, <laughs> at your uh, local, um, how do you say that? Um, authority. Um, authority. The yeah. website is, is trash. The UX UI is, is terrible. But it's just that no one cares because it costs too much and because they want to pay a guy and do it. But eventually they will. They'll be like, yeah. wait, we can do some websites and, and some cool UX UI all of a sudden. And I'm asking the question to the people, is there enough UX UI design in the world? I'm pretty sure no. you go into a lot of, the, um, because I also do it. And sometimes it's like, I'm literally questioning, is it just HTML and CSS? Because that's horrible that's just horrible design and i hate it i hate being on that website and you're still there and it's still heavily used so i see ai going to german bureaucracy yeah because i tried this <laughs> when i was in berlin that was horrible but you see there's still some places to be fit so just hang on there adapt move on with it just like the internet don't be a baby like the you know the <laughs> The old guys, they were like, no, but not me, not the internet. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen, man. Uh, Absolutely. Just, just adapt. Well, I just realized we're at the time. Uh, I think we could have spent maybe another hour on this. Maybe that's the theme for another uh, webinar. But I would like to first off uh, thank you, Ruben, for you know spending time uh, with our community and sharing some of his knowledge. Thank you for everyone who's been super involved in the chat. Christoph has been answering a lot of questions, and I appreciate that. Before everyone kind of stay exits, with us. Yes, <laughs> I can see you... them already leaving. No, 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 stay yeah. with us. Stay with us. We have so, a gift for you. We have. There's a gift. two things. I already posted the links to a few uh, goodies that we put together, Ruben and I. Um, and also, I would like to invite everyone to share a link to their LinkedIn so that this doesn't remain like a one-time off event. So I have You're something to say on that, Radu. Of course, right yeah. the bats. I have 24,000 invitation connection requests. Um, it's a hell, living hell to just go through them. And I don't, because I, I cannot do it. Now, if you really want to connect with me, I'll be fine. Uh, some people are really interested in connecting with me and uh, I do a little checkup on your profile, but please put a note that says, hey, I'm I was part of Mento. Yeah. I was at the, uh, at the webinar. I like this and that. I'd like to connect. Um, because if there is no notes, I don't manually check every profile at all. So you should use notes. AI for that. 
<laughs> yeah, please come on. And you know what? I asked LinkedIn, what if I start accepting this many requests? And they said, oh, no, no, don't do that. They think <laughs> that you're a robot, so your account will be banned. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't do it. Okay. But yeah, yeah, it's not allowed on the internet. <laughs> no, 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 not yet, but it's going to be a real mess. Um, just wanted to say, yes, I, I put down two courses, one on GPT-4 for content creation and one on MidJourney. I recorded the one on MidJourney. It's already recorded. I'm just editing it and it should be live within one or two weeks, but you can join the wait list. And I have the code that you can see in the chat. You can put the code MENTO and it goes from $120 to $97. It's two hours of masterclass in videos in a much, much better setup than this one. I promise <laughs> I have the whole thing. I had the cameraman and and the, and the nice setup. And, um, and yeah, I'd be more than happy to welcome you into my community. Everyone that buys a masterclass receive free weekly videos of me, free prompts on MidJourney, free prompts on uh, chat GPT and some weekly news on me and how it's going. Uh, okay. So I'd love to welcome you inside this community and thank you, Radu, for this uh, opportunity. I love to learn about uh, A-B testing and UX UI design. Uh, yeah. I just love, just love that one. And I think for the people that are still on the, on the chat. So first off, share your LinkedIn profile and just spend time. We're not going to close this, uh, zoom so you can, you know, you, you have enough time to just like copy paste every link and connect with everyone. The other thing that I wanted to let everyone know is we're also working on a module, uh, for Mento in how you can use AI as a UX designer. So we're going to awesome. launch it in probably like a month or two. So it's still in the works, but I think that's, um, we need to adapt as well and we need to realize hey we have a new tool it's coming fast we need to learn how to use it i don't know maybe you were gonna convince ruben to help us with that module as well yeah. i don't know like and just throwing that yeah, out yeah. but i mean we talked about it because for now i don't have access to that galileo that seems to be the the toughest the strongest again you need to understand you have roughly 30 50 tools every day mm -hmm. that are released. And as I said, we're at the first wave. So remember, yeah. we are at the moment people build computers, not at the moment people build Google, and not at the moment people build Amazon or Uber or Netflix on mm -hmm. Google or Figma or Webflow. So you see that you have three waves, like computer, Google, mm -hmm. Amazon, Webflow, Figma, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're like at the very beginning. So it's tough to know which tools are going to be like the best used. But I already tried to connect with some people on LinkedIn from Galileo. If I have access, I'd be like, guys, yeah. I have this community of UX UI designers. Oh yeah, definitely. We should get and, everyone on the And, and you should it. get like, you should give them a, um, 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 beta access. And, um, and that would be lovely to do that. And if I can learn how to use Galileo and make that course with you, like, yeah, yeah. it comes down. I would love that. Yeah. The other thing I would, and I haven't seen Galileo, so I haven't tried it out yet. Um, people think like wait lists are usually, you know, it's so good that we want to keep people out. Usually I've, I've been in product design. I know what a wait list means. It's like, oh, yeah, we're so not scrappy. ready yet. <laughs> we're not ready yet. Like it's so Absolutely bad. Not. So we're not so going to let everyone, because if everybody starts yeah. speaking like how bad this is, yeah, we're screwed. Exactly. So we're going to like yeah. keep the gates closed and we're going to only let like a few Exactly. Bowling. And the only thing that you see on the internet from Galileo is like the GIFs, the videos that they share. Of course, of course, which are which the best results. With, with, yes. But again, let's not be boomers. I know you're you not, because as I've shown you with Yoda, yeah. if we go from V1 to V5 within a year or two, absolutely. No, that's, I agree. that's scary good, you know? And, um, and imagine if some uh, super Radu uh, who has a documentation of like, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of like converting landing pages and start putting it inside a tool that's going to do some magic and Absolutely. for this i'm also scared as a content creator <laughs> that they're just going to milk every good content creators and be like okay that's the sauce and now let's hey if anyone content. should be worried it's you like you would be the first yeah, job. everyone is look okay the day i was the, the most scared of ai is this guy from twitter nick st pierre He's using Midjourney. I think he's the best guy I know on Midjourney. 
and he's doing ads on Gucci. Gucci, like uh, the brand, lux- uh, luxury yeah. brand. The ads are so good. They made me question some, like, like literally made me question like, okay, I never thought of that, but models and photographers, damn, that's expensive. I oh think. yeah, definitely. Models could just go away and models could be just a thing yeah, where they when- do the catwalking, you know, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, no one's safe. <laughs> but sometimes the ones that are safe will always be the hard worker and yeah. people that can adapt. So if you can adapt and you work hard, you're going to profit from it uh, immensely, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think at the end of the day, what's going to left, be left for us, as you said, is solving problems. Like that's going to be our thing. We're going we're gonna to solve problems and then the rest is yeah. going to be um, outsourced. All right. Well, um, first off, thank you everyone for joining and tuning in and staying like nine minutes past the hour. We had a huge audience, so I want to appreciate and uh, thank everyone. Thank you, Ruben, for spending an hour with us and sharing some of this knowledge. And I hope to see you around. Please connect with everyone on on LinkedIn. We're gonna, you know, turn off our cameras and whatnot, but we're gonna leave yeah. the room open for like a minute or two for everyone to have time to go through the the links. Add. We're also we send like a few goodies. Um, I'm, I'm gonna type them in the chat again. And um, yeah, connect with us on, on LinkedIn. And if you want to be uh, pro- uh, not prompted, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to know, know when our next event is, you can also sign up on our meetup uh, group and it's in the links that I've posted and you'll, you'll know when we host another event. But thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ruben. Everyone have a good day, evening from wherever you've been connecting and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone.